Welcome back to another episode of Boomer Bus. I'm your host, Terry, and today continuing our all-pro film session series with Fletcher Cox from the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, again, just going over the 2018 uh, first-team all-pro roster, looking at some of their film and verifying they got all-pro status. Um, and so for Fletcher Cox, uh, he's been in the league for a while. And back when he got drafted, I was definitely still doing the draft, but I don't remember scouting him too heavily. Um, so that could be a number of reasons, but I don't remember exactly like, uh, my opinion of him coming out. And so I can't really speak to that, but we all know that he, uh, continued on to be one of the better players in the league since joining. So, uh, we're just going to go through some of, uh, his sacks from this year and then, yeah, just break down what we see. So let's go ahead and get this started. And we'll be starting from week 17. I just love when the player just doesn't want to work on the first try. But anyway, going against the Redskins. Fourth down and 12. And we see it's a long uh, play. So the secondary gives the D-line time. As that play develops, then we got Fletcher Cox right here. Going against the guard, gets his head down, arms into the chest, just almost forklifts him, just takes him off his feet, gets rid of him, attacks the ball, and makes the sack. And the thing I like about that is that uh, he attacks the ball. He doesn't, doesn't just go to sack the quarterback. Once he gets there, he attacks the ball as well, ends up causing a fumble. They don't get it, but I like guys that attack the ball. And so what you see, Fletcher Cox has really long arms. And so when he's bull rushing, he's got a lot of power. But when he's bull rushing, those long arms really help you because uh, you're able to attack the, the the offense from a longer distance. You don't have to really get chest to chest to attack or to bull rush. And that just gives you more space to operate as a defense alignment. And so this one, Fletcher stalls out, but... Continues to stay with the play, uses his motor, and I believe that ended up counting as a sack. Then, of course, the player doesn't want to work. There we go. So, fourth down again. Eagles up 24. Fletcher's on the edge, I believe. And, yeah, walk, walks another guy into the quarterback. So going against this guard, guard doesn't anchor or anything, just absolutely on his heels as Fletcher attacks him and just blows through him. And again, using that power to walk somebody back and then get off the block and then finish the uh, sack. So the number one thing you'll see is power. When you're talking about Fletcher Cox, but you also see that motor as well. And this wasn't a play he got a sack. That was a play someone else got a sack, and he just ended up picking up the fumble being around the ball, which is good. You always stay around the ball. Good things happen. I always say that. All right, so Fletcher is here working on the interior. Looks like we got a stunt. Oh, some type of game on the line. And again, those are always about timing and speed or timing and explosion. So they, uh, they end up twisting on a delay. Linemen don't pick it up. but have an explosion to get to the quarterback and finish that. And then against the Dallas Cowboys, we'll see this sack. Coverage does their job. Uh, Dak doesn't really have anywhere to go, but you see Fletcher is going against Zach Martin, another all pro. And you'll see here, he walks him back again. Some guys get their hands around the shoulder pads, you know, towards the, or towards the shoulders. You want to get your hands in the pecs, like right on the pecs. That's where you have the most driving power. That's where you could lock your triceps and really push 
And you see good hand placement from Fletcher Cox when he's bull rushing. He's not just bully ball bumping into people. He's got long reach, and then he's also using the correct hand placement to have the uh, best chance to then drive that person and walk him back. Then against the Cowboys again on the other side against the guard. And we see him blow through two people. And so this is this is a nice uh, example. People talk about speed to power. This is power to speed. He goes in like he's going to bull rush. Then he gets the quick disengage, uses the momentum against him. And then Zeke has no real chance to stop him. So <laughs> ends up getting the sack there. But like I said, you've been setting them up. You do a lot of bull rushing. So they're ready to anchor and sit on that. And once they absorb the blow, you get the quick uh, disengage. And you keep your feet to the quarterback and keep moving. The lineman had no chance of recovering from that. So it was a nice change up. And that's a nice sign where you see a guy that's just not relying on, you know, the physical power or speed. He's also changing it up and using technique as well. So against the Redskins, over here towards the B gap, we got a stunt inside. That might have been a fumble that Fletcher gets because he didn't get that sack. I don't understand why he put all these sacks on here that wasn't his, but anyway, standing against the Redskins, we got Fletcher here over the tackle, ends up going against the guard, and the guard does a good job. I mean, the guard ends up getting his hands in the face mask, but does a pretty good job um, blocking Fletcher. Fletcher just stays towards the quarterback and doesn't give up on the play. So going against the Giants, and it's nice to see uh, these plays against division rivals or division teams, I should say. So Fletcher is going up against the guard here. And we see that rip and lean. Now, he's a bigger dude. His lean isn't as pretty <laughs> as, you know, uh, uh, Aaron Donald or Khalil Mack or anybody. But as, as I said before, if you're going to be a top pass rush, you got to be able to do it. Because right now, that initial move didn't really work. He didn't win off the line. And so now you got to continue to work towards the quarterback. And you take the tightest path. You get underneath the block. You get your hips low. And make a sack. And that's the difference. Because if you can't lean like that, then you're talking about a loss right at the line of scrimmage and it's over with. All right, so we got Fletcher over the center. Actually, yeah, let's go here. So that's Ryan Kelly, I believe, is a real good center, and Quentin Nelson. And the secondary gives them time there. You got Cox against Nelson and Ryan Kelly, double team. And really, that's that's a combination of power and motor. The power to continue to push Ryan Kelly back in that double team because you can see it's not a heads-up double team. And so it, you see that Quinn Nelson is kind of moving his feet to try to slide over to get to Cox. Now, if Fletcher just kind of deadens his feet, then Quentin could get into position and they just lock him out. But the fact that he continues to move up the field, continues to move his feet, it's hard for Nelson to ever get in front of him and make that block. And Kelly's holding on, and I wouldn't say for dear life, but Kelly's holding on as Cox is bull rushing him. So it, he, what you're effectively doing as you continue to attack this path, is you make it really hard for uh, this guard to ever get into position to then close you off. And that's what Cox does. Is continues to sink his hips, continues to work to the quarterback. And that's against two really good players. So now going against the Bucks.
We got Fletcher in the B gap. Woo! There it is. We love to see a win off the line. And just gives them a hesitation. Guards, not sure what to expect. Wow, that took forever. <laughs> and he lunges. Oh. Look, I mean, you could tell by the way he got defeated, how he got defeated. The way he looks when he's defeated. And I'll try to pause it. And so, flat-footed and shoulder slumped over, leaning. Absolutely leaning. And uh, he lunged with his hands and, and got the momentum used against him. And you're going up against a vet. So again, you watch this guard, and his first shot, he's going to lean. He's going to lunge out, doesn't step into it, doesn't move his feet, just lunges his arms, and Fletcher Cox does what all pros should. They give you their hands, you defeat those hands, and keep going. Love to see that. So Fletcher's here. And again, secondary, giving the D-line time to go. There's no win initially. Continues to work, but also continues to push the, <laughs> the lineman back. And it looks like Fletcher's not even trying super hard, and this guy's just walking backwards. I mean, I'm sure Fletcher is still moving him, but it just looks effortless. All right, so it looks like that was it uh, for F Fletcher Cox. And if you saw, I did the um, I did the episode, or I did a episode about Brandon Graham. And I wasn't super impressed with Brandon Graham as an edge rusher, um, but I do think that Fletcher Cox is more impressive. And so, in if, if for anything, if you saw the few plays where. He wasn't just bully ball. He also has good technique. And if you look at some of the run plays, and there's a lot of those too, uh, the guy just has good motor. I mean, that was his calling cards. Um, I knew he was a good player. I haven't really sat down and watched film, but watching this, I see he's like one of the strongest players. And I could just tell by the guys that he was beating and how he was beating them. He's one of the strongest players probably on the interior. But also you add that in with the motor, more than likely with these all pros, you, especially on defense, you're going to see guys that continue to hustle and really get after it, you know, through the whistle. And so that's really nice to see. Uh, but also the hand technique. He's a vet and he's got good hand technique to go along with that power. So uh, as far as all pro status, I'll definitely give him all pro status. So anyway, go to the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around, get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for listening.